All right, so what is FedRAMP and what is FISMA? Now, we want to simply think of FISMA as a federal law. It's a standard that's been set, signed by, you know, the government, by the executive branch. And basically, I think it was Obama in his first term signed it. And basically, again, it's, it's a law that mandated federal government agencies to get basically enabled and security. Whereas FedRAMP is more of a cloud risk assessment or risk management approach that is built off of FISMA. So that's sort of where that comes in. People confuse FISMA and FedRAMP as the same thing. FISMA is a law, executive order, or basically congressional order signed by the president, I should say. So it's a law. FedRAMP is a directive by the Office of Management and Budget to have everybody doing the same thing in the federal government when it comes to what? To cloud. So that's really the high level difference. So I just wanna make sure we got that because these terms get thrown out there and people get confused for good reason. All right, so FISMA is a law in 2002 that was enacted to strengthen the security of the government. FISMA applies to all information systems in general, but FedRAMP applies to what? To cloud service providers and also agencies that do plan to use cloud. So think of FedRAMP as a result of the cloud first policy that uses FISMA for cloud. Okay, and it was developed as a program for cloud service providers to get an assessment conducted by a 3P, a 3PAO. That is a third party audit office, basically. All right, so how do we get authorization? So let's say you're, you're an integrator, you wanna do work for the government. You have to get certain requirements met to make compliance. The first thing is, is that the service provider will be granted authority to operate. There's, there's generally what's called a provisional. So that's a temporary authority to operate, meaning that you could start soliciting, responding to RFPs, et cetera. So that's what that's about. Let me check the chat here. Um, okay, good question. Is FISMA, a low for all information systems in the federal space or a law. Yes, that is correct. FISMA applies to basically all the federal government agencies. Now, there's always sort of exceptions um, to a degree, like the intelligence agencies sort of do what they want. But generally, in general, uh, FISMA applies to civilian and military organizations. So it is a law, very good, yes, correct. All right, so that's the first step. The second step is, is that the service provider needs to meet with the FedRAMP security control requirements that are in NIST. Basically you have to meet them, meaning that you know, they're going to uh, you know, accommodate them is another way to look at it. The next thing that happens is that their security pack packages that will require templates. And I'll show you where you find those. The CSP is going to need to come in and pay for a third party assessor. The next thing that would happen is that there's a package that would be posted in the FedRAM security, uh, secure repository. <clears throat> Let me get some water, sorry about that. So when it comes to compliance, it comes down to two methods. There's a JAB board where you, as the uh, service provider, you would go through the JAB. Basically, I'm going to request my cloud service, uh, be approved for all the agencies I can get, basically, and then the board will give you some kind of provisional authority if there's a reason to, or if you don't, or get approved, then you know you have to fix what has to be fixed. Or what can happen is, is that the agency says, you know what, we don't have time 
to go through a JAB. We really need this cloud service and we're gonna go sponsor it and we'll handle this ourselves. So those are the two methods that compliance requirements can be met. And then there's different impact levels. So basically impact levels are security levels. Basically like in the world of government contracting, we would have a top secret, secret, classified, unclassified, and other different security classifications. This is similar based on the amount of controls that you probably need to validate and also need to comply with. So this is not so much per se, you know, is this secret or not? It's more focused on what are the level of controls we have to go through to deal with. Now, here's an example of EWS public security contract vehicles. For example, they're on a lot of federal, federal contracts. Now, in the world of government contracting, we would call a contract vehicle typically by an acronym. And you can see here, there's a lot of acronyms. So you have JEDI, you have SOUP, NASA SOUP, you have COMET. Basically, these are just acronyms that define what the contract's about. So, you know, again, it could be I, Army ITIS, uh, which is like uh, Information Technology Enterprise Services, NetSense, Network uh, Central Tactical, whatever. I forgot exactly what it stands for. But basically, each of these vehicles um, or either like for NASA, this is just for NASA generally. So this is special just for NASA. JEDI is Department of Defense where GSA is typically open to all government agencies. So that's typically what you might see. And then Army is typically an Army-based contract. 